And now we continue our build up to the upcoming general elections as we cross live to Abuja, where Professor Jerry Ghana, a politician, is our guest. Glad to have you, uh, Professor Jerry Ghana. Uh, let's start this way. Uh, Thank you very much. Good morning. Good. Good morning Thank to you. Thank you for you. joining us. Uh, this uh, in 1993, you were a senator, and, and then, of course, you became director, DFRRI, director, Mamser. You became a minister under Shoneko, a minister also under uh, Abacha. You were also a minister under Obasanjo. You were 73 plus. Uh, in 1993, 2006, mm -hmm. you contested this election. You want to be president. Uh, now, the question I'm asking is, is there something in government that's always magneting you to want to go back to government? Not really. It was more of a, a call to service. I've never applied for any of these jobs. Uh, I started as a lecturer at Amadou Belenza, be became a professor of geography and development studies. I loved my students. I loved teaching. I loved being a researcher. But because one has the skill of being able to do excellently whatever I've been assigned, I kept being requested by various governments to do certain things. Under DIFRI, I was a director for social mobilization, and uh, they have never seen that kind of social mobilization. And then it, that was what uh, kind of recommended me when MAMSA was set up uh, to say, now look, come into MAMSA. Therefore, at every point in time, it has been a call to serve the nation. It wasn't an application for my side. And even now that I'm offering myself, again, it is really a call a call that here there, was, there is a very definite need, especially at this point in time in Nigeria, a very definite need for those who understand what Nigeria is going through so as to restructure the nation, stabilize the polity, bring up peace and stability, uh, get the fundamentals of economic growth and development going. Uh, you, you need to understand the system very effectively. And then now to also have the leadership qualities of understanding the system, having the courage to take decisions, the capacity to develop and implement you know, uh, decisions. And this is what is attracting people to really request me. My nickname in Nigeria, anywhere I've gone, is Mr. Do It Well. This is what has been recommending me. Even this time around, this is why a number of people across the nation said, look, Prof, the nation is going through a very difficult time. We need people like you who understand the system, who have the passion for development, who have the love of the people, who have very clear programs, and the willingness and the capacity to implement them. Please come, rescue the nation. That's why I'm here. All right, picking up from what you have just said, that people want you to contest for the presidency, um, how do you react to critics who yeah. say that um, Donald Duke was actually given the mandate of the people, and your mandate is based on zoning and the rotation formula? Not really. It's a, a mandate that's given on democracy and the rule of law must be taken together. The Constitution of Nigeria provides that the parties sponsor the candidates in accordance with their own procedures. The procedure of the party was very clearly laid down. So it is not a matter of zone, it's a matter of really understanding a political strategy for winning. And the party agreed that in order to balance the forces within the party and the nation, the national chairmanship of the party and the presidential candidate and president should not come from the same part of Nigeria. It is a question of ge geopolitical balance. And uh, it is wise for not only uh, making sure that Nigeria is stable, but also that we can now attract people from various parts. I want to thank God that I'm a person of excellence. Uh, when I went to school, I was one of the best in 1967 when we finished from, uh, to go to university on the HSC. So I'm not a mediocre. When I went to, to Amadou Belen, I won one of the best degrees. And I proceeded to the University of London, University of Aberdeen. I did excellently. So it's not zoning that has given me these days. It is a question of geopolitical balance and fairness and equity so that there will be participation. I happen to come from a small group, but that doesn't mean because I'm Nupe in a small group, I don't have something to offer. I have something excellently to offer. And all I'm right, tested. Pr prof, tested let me, let me come excellent. in there. So, let, let me come in there, Prof. I had you said yeah. just a while ago, interestingly, that uh, you were called Mr. Do It Well. And I have had said that true leadership. That, that's exactly, that's my nickname. <laughs> good, that's where I'm coming from, uh, or going to. True leadership, I've had said, is uh, having 
uh, a protege, raising up people to follow after you, you know. And if that's the case, I also learned that you, you created a leadership forum for the young. I don't remember, but correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm wondering why you are not grooming people to take off from where you are, why you're still in the uh, scene with people like Donald Duke, who could, I don't know, maybe pass for your son. Uh, let me confirm that, yes, I'm a very great believer in raising new generations of leaders. All teachers are like that. You know, the, the joy of a teacher is to see a student go even further than his. Now, but at this point in time, within the nation, there are certain fundamentals within the nation that needed to be settled. And in settling them, you needed those who have the institutional memory, those who have the experience over the years. Because issues of really saying that, what kind of federation should we have? How do we restructure this nation for stability, peace, and prosperity? How do we make sure that Nigeria now becomes a stable democracy? Believe you me, it takes a lot of experience, a lot of uh, leadership qualities to be able to now say to your colleagues that over the years this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. Therefore, this time around, this is how we should do it. And therefore, the youth are the other ones, the ones I've been raising. And you are quite right. We are raising a whole new generation. Some of them are governors, some are going for senate, some are going to others. But for the office of presidency, then I say, look, let us be realistic. The issues facing the leadership of Nigeria at this point require those who really understand the issue, the factors, the, the processes, the dimensions, the political forces, so that we can now take decisions that can be solid and firm, and then we don't have to waste time anymore on such. We can now move on to issues of development. This nation has invested in me over the years, and it is a way of giving back in this stage to learn to say, now look, part of all these conferences that have taken place before, whether it's in 77, 78, or in 1987, 88, or in 1994, 95, or in 2005, or in 2014, we've been part of these. Therefore, it is good to utilize those experiences so that decisions are taken based on where research positions. That is the consideration. Experience matters in, that, in such matters. And I want to say this. It was not so much really a, a kind of a taking over from the youth when they not. The fair position is that the party said, because the chairmanship of our party comes from the southern states, for geopolitical balance and for a strategy of winning elections, let the presidential candidate or president come from the northern part. That is fair enough. That is good. It that is, is wisdom. It, that it is, is strategy. It is fair, as you put it. But why wasn't that condition set before the elections, the primary, were conducted? Was that an ace up your sleeves? I must confess that uh, you are right there. The people who did the initial screening should have had the courage of their convictions to say, ab initio, you do not qualify. Mm -hmm. And they didn't. They allowed the process and other things. And I don't, since the matter is before the court, I don't want to go into the details. The high court at the lower level has already given me, and that's why I can be here as a legitimate uh, uh, candidate uh -oh. of the party. They have gone on appeal. And I think it is only wise for me to now leave it at that level so that it's because the matter is sub regarding that particular issue. Yeah, Indeed. you're absolutely correct. Yeah. It's sub yeah. uh, uh, Your chairman, Olufalaye, said that much. And during your stakeholder summit, uh, he, re he invited him, but he refused to attend. Isn't that a minus, you know, in your uh, angling no. to become the president? He didn't attend. Uh, and, and there's a division no, now between you and no, that no, side. Not at all, not at all. Not at all, it's not a minus whatsoever. He was not, uh, it wasn't possible for him to be there. Uh, I would have loved him to be there. Yeah, but he but said, so, sorry, Prof. Chairman North. Yeah, he said, what he said was yeah. that w we have gone to court, just like you said, he sub judici, and we've appealed what the court, the court granting you to become the mm. presidential candidate over STP. So he said, because of that, I don't want to disobey the court. No, no. That, that's what, that's, that's what uh, he said. No, 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 no. That is not a, a good interpretation of the law because there is a subsisting judgment mm. of a competent court of law 
that judgment until set aside by a superior court is the, is the, is the matter of the day. So if he is to obey the court, obey the judgment, that is the judgment he should obey. The Court of Appeal is yet to sit on this matter, and therefore the subsistent judgment, which anyone who loves the rule of law should obey, is the judgment of the court. That court is competent. That court is, is, a, is a court that really should take decision. And therefore, I'm executing that judgment. And my, my chairman should have respected the law to implement the order of the court. Mm. When now we are in the court of appeal, if the court of appeal rules otherwise, we obey it. We, are, we obey the rule of law. Democracy and the rule of law must go together. All and right. we are laying foundations. And Chief Olufale, as our chairman, should have laid a good example. Because I'm a very distinguished member of this party. Indeed, As a distinguished you... member of the party who was the chairman of the, of the strategy committee, of the, of the committee that actually remobilized the party, he should have given me the fair chance because the court said, for now, I'm the candidate. If something says later on that is otherwise, then we obey it. But for now, Professor Jerry Ghana is a legitimate legal candidate of the Social Democratic Party. That's why I'm here. And that's correct. Your, the court has, has named you the candidate of the SDP. But analysts have said your candidacy may jeopardize the chances of your party, that's the Social Democratic Party, at the presidential election. What, how do you respond to that? I, I don't know what you mean by jeopardize. In fact, I have the best chance. Not jeopardize. In fact, this is why they are fighting some other forces, because I, I believe the, the gentleman you refer to is not on his own. There are a number of forces. We know this country. We know the realities on the ground. Me imagine from this part of Nigeria, the entire Middle West, nearly 14 states, would immediately feel their own is coming. I represent the small, small, small groups right across this nation, right from Goza to Duzuru, in terms of all the, in Plato, in Benue, in Taraba, in Adamawa, in Niger, in Kogi, in Kwara. My goodness, this, uh, they're getting very excited about this. And then, of course, the southern states, we've been in this for a long time. They now see a progressive, truly progressive uh, you know, candidate. So, in fact, I'm the game changer. It's my candidature that has really provided the credible alternative. That is why a number of people are maybe really fighting my candidature. I'm telling you, this is the way forward. This is why the entire system now is really, as it were, reverberating. With the news that Professor oh. Jerry Ghana is not the is in the, is in the competition. Of the party. We oh, all right, mobilize, all right. Uh, we can organize, we can move forward. Yeah, I mean, from your days of Mansa, we've known you to be always a talker. All right, um, <laughs> let's look at. <laughs> no, not a talker. Yes, yeah, doer. What, what, <laughs> not well, a talker. Okay, if you add doer, all right, doer as well. L let's talk about the acronym. Uh, that you created SWIFT. You'd like to, uh, because I mean, it was, yes. it was w one of the things you talked about your stakeholders meeting that you wanted to get everybody together and understand the agenda <laughs> of SWIFT. Yes, Let's talk a little, right. a, little, a little bit about SWIFT. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For Nigerians to really get the message very clearly, we felt we should emphasize our key programs and give them a code name they can remember. So we created the code name for our five programs. The S in the SWIFT, which is the code name, the S, S there stands for security reengineering. Because uppermost in the hearts of many Nigerians is the matter of in this insecurity is getting too serious. People are fearful for their lives. People are fearful for their children. People are fearful for their communities. So the issue of security is very, very top on the agenda of millions of Nigerians. So security engineering, re-engineering is our number one program. Secondly, the issue of poverty and hunger and underdevelopment is worrying so many Nigerians. And therefore, we say, now look, this is the time to create wealth. So wealth creation is the W in the SWIFT. And then, of course, you cannot create wealth. You cannot really uh, go, cause growth and development in the economy if you don't have infrastructure. So infrastructure excellence and power supply is the I in the SWIFT. And then, of course, because resources are being pilfered here and there, we must continue in a very effective way the fight against corruption and indiscipline. Because this is extremely important. There is too much indiscipline in the land. The corruption will kill Nigeria if we don't really resolve the issue. And then the T in the SWIFT is for technology, education, and human development. So we have five 
point program in the SWIFT, which I've just analyzed. I wish I had the time to take you through each of the programs. Believe you me, we designed them after understanding what is disturbing Nigeria the most. The issue of security, the issue of hunger and poverty, the issue of infrastructure, especially power supply, the issue of this corruption and indiscipline, and the issue, of course, raising qualitative young people in the nation through excellent education that is science and technology based. You, you seem to have um, given us a broad uh, general perspective of what SWIFT is. We would like to get specifics. Maybe on wealth, Thank you very for, much. maybe on wealth, have, uh, on, on wealth, for example, creating wealth. Maybe a specific yes. on that because no, you talked no, about time. I, I appreciate, Just I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity because uh, this is something that we love to do because we want people to really understand the details of our program. So the S, which is for security reengineering, focuses on a promise to Nigerians that we are going to very seriously create a new security architecture in such a way that the security systems are so effective particularly the police, because the police are the ones that are going to be there in the various communities. And apart from reforming the police, we want to understand enlarge the police force. Because how do you police over 180 million Nigerians with less than 400,000 police? It's not possible. So our first target in the first six months is to really raise the Nigerian police for, for about uh, uh, 350 or 400,000 to about 900,000 an average of about 25,000 men. And not just the men, but we give them the equipment, not only the equipment, the weaponry, all that it takes for them to be efficient in their work. Then wealth creation. Nigerians are suffering from hunger and poverty in the midst of plenty. And therefore, we've identified a whole range of programs that will create wealth in terms of basically making sure if uh, we, 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 we are able to make sure that we utilize our resources. The land resources, for example, to grow, the, to grow the kind of commodities that we can export and the resources will flow in. Our solid minerals, we believe that we can create in each of the 774 local governments a growth center based on the community's uh, resources. We believe that there will be industrial growth centers in each state. Again, based on the raw materials and resources, solid minerals are available. Ajokuta then shall be completed and we create other nodes like that across the nation. Then we can go on to many other areas. And we believe that we should, as a matter of this, make sure that there is stability in the land, there is security in the land, oh, oh, there is the right. rule of oh, law, right, there is arbitration, uh, so that investments can be brought in. All right, Prof. If I can uh, go we on. Don't, no, you no. can't. You can. Sorry, we don't have all the time. Yeah, I'd have loved to go on, but we don't have all the time. Now, I, I well, know. You, you, I, I, you asked I, for it. So. And, and, you, and you gave it. All right. I know. I know that. Uh, or let me say, I assume that you're a proponent of the rule of law. You agree with the law. Very, very much so. Fantastic, much so. fantastic. Mm. Now, if the law that you're a proponent of and you agree with now says that a duke uh, should be the candidate of the SDP to run, what will you do? As of now, the law has decided through a competent court that I am the legitimate legal candidate, and everybody should obey. If the ruling, uh, say the appeal court rules otherwise, I am a very, very obedient person to the rule of law. But I know that the court itself will look at the issues, as they are very, very clear. I'm not a lawyer, but the issues look very, very clear in this matter. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I abide by the rule of law. Good. But as of now, Good. people should abide by the ruling that has been given to me, and I'm proceeding. All right. Well, we wish you the very best. Professor Jerry Gana, presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, thank you for joining us on Arise Africa.